When we look at electric powertrain, you see how different this is from a conventional petrol engine race car, but it is surprisingly similar to electric vehicles and radio controlled cars if you had a look at the mechanics underneath those. It starts off with the battery unit. This is provided by Williams Advanced Engineering and it's a very large carbon fibre unit weighing about 200 kilos and it has to be large and heavy first of all because there's a large volume of batteries inside but also because this is part of the structure of the race car. This bolts between the survival cell and the bell housing and provides a key part of the car's structure. Within this you then have the individual battery cells and there is uh, electronics which then manage the condition of each one of those individual cells. The cells are lithium ion batteries, very similar to what you would find in a laptop. Uh, obviously the number of them is far greater, several hundred units with inside this very large unit at the back of the car. With the batteries being charged and discharged so frequently during the lap, they get very hot and as a result the battery actually needs its own cooling system. So in the right side pod you have uh, a radiator which has cooling liquid which keeps the battery cells under the right temperature. Then bolted to the back of the battery unit you have the electric motor unit or the e-motor unit. This system is provided by McLaren Applied Technologies and this is actually the same motor and it has the same power controller as they use in their P1 supercar. It's a very small unit, uh, it's about 200 kilowatts, so in maximum it produces about 180 horsepower, which at full power is more than the Formula One car's energy recovery systems. The motor bolts between the battery and the gearbox in a small bell housing. This just provides somewhere for it to mount in order to engage with the gearbox. The motor itself needs to connect to the battery and to do this it passes through what they call the inverter or the power controller. And this is the electrical unit that sits on top of the battery unit and you have two cables which provide the power from the battery to the inverter and then three cables because it's AC power from the inverter goes through to the motor and this effectively is the means by which you can switch between charging and discharging of the battery and it also acts as the throttle so when the driver puts their foot down the electronics are telling this unit, this inverter unit to add voltage to the motor which gives the drivers the acceleration Again, these units all run very hot and these also require their own cooling. So in the left side pod, there's another radiator which again provides cooling liquid which keeps both the inverter and the motor down to the correct temperature. Behind this, you have the gearbox and there's a five-speed paddle shift gearbox provided by Hewland. This is a fairly conventional unit and the reason you have a gearbox on a Formula E car is because the e-motor is relatively small and doesn't have the torque to provide direct drive to give you all of the power and performance that you need from the race car. So they multiply the power of the motor through the gearbox and the drivers have five speeds plus reverse in order to get the acceleration all the way up to the car's capped top speed. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like, to subscribe to this channel and to leave your comments below.